That's all right. Thanks. Okay, so today um, I'm going to present to you a study that we carried out with David Hensher, Shin Ho, and Corinne Mui, which is about um, the preferences towards PRT and LRT from different perspectives. So as a voter, as a citizen, as a taxpayer, or as a self-interested person. First of all, I want to acknowledge the work, well, the funding support of the BRT Center. Uh, we acknowledge, um, well, the funding support and also the support from other members who helped in the collection of the data. So Theo Yechem, Patricia Aranta, Rosario Macario, Anson Stewart, and Chris Segra. So I'm going to start by uh, giving you an introduction to the topic. Then I'm going to present the choice experiment that we used followed by the samples. Then I'm going to present the model formulation and the results, the willingness to pay estimates, some simulated scenarios, and I'm going to finish you by presenting the key findings. So bus rapid transit has often been passed over in favor of light rail transit in many geographical settings in developed economies, despite having much appeal in delivering high quality service in a cost-effective manner. So there is a well-known emotional attachment to rail solutions and image perception. For this, we studied five different countries and tried to understand how the preferences change between them. So we considered Australia, France, Portugal, UK, and US. So the focus on this paper particularly is to understand whether there are significant differences or similarities in the key behavioral outputs, such as the willingness to pay estimates and the simulations associated with five measures of preference revelation when comparing BRT to an LRT system in these five different countries. So the five measures of preference revelation that we considered are, are outlined by these five questions. The first one is which one between the BRT and the LRT would benefit your metropolitan area better, which we will refer to as the metro uh, perspective. The second one is which one do you personally prefer, which is the self-interested president, and we will call this model as the prefer model. And the third one is which investment is better value for taxpayers' money. So this one represents, well, taxpayers, obviously, perspective, and we will call this value. The fourth one is if you were voting now, which one would you vote for? This is the voter perspective and we will call the boat, the boat model. And the fifth one is which investment would improve the liveability of the metropolitan area more. So this is, has to do with liveability, so we call it live model. Um, and it's um, an altruistic resident or uh, caring about the liveability of the metropolitan area. So these are the five questions. I'll explain the data set in a few moments. So this is the choice experiment. As I told you, we have five countries, 19 cities in each country, eight cities in Australia, and six cities in the US, one in Portugal, and two in the UK, and two in France. In total, we had 3,136 observations. They're all spread out um, through these cities. So the design consisted in showing two alternatives to the respondent, one a BRT and one an LRT alternative. They were investment projects and both had the same uh, root length. So each respondent had to answer two choice, two toy, choice tasks. Sorry. Um, and the, at the end, individuals were asked for their social demographics, their experience on public transport, and which attributes they had attended or not attended to, which is considered a stated attribute non-attendance. And all the models I'm going to present to you today include attribute non-attendance, although it's not the focus of this paper, but they include it. So this is a illustrative choice screen of the survey. As you can see, well, the first column represents the first system, which is the LRT. I divided it into two parts, but this is actually below the first one. And the second column represents the BRT alternative. As you can see here, there is a description of the investment, which is construction cost, construction time, and percentage of population service, etc. Then we have service levels, 
which have to do with the services like the frequency, capacity, travel time, etc. The features of the system, which are if it requires prepaid ticket, if there is integrated fare, the waiting time, um, onboard staff, if there is onboard staff, etc. And the last one are general investments of the characteristic, so of, sorry, of the investment, which are if the operation is assured for a minimum of how many years, if the risk of the risk of it being closed down after the assured minimum period and environmentally friendliness and other factors. So mainly we have two separate characteristics, one that has to do with the investments, which are the description of the investment, and the last one, which are the general characteristics of the investment, and the other is the system characteristics, which has to do with the service levels and the features of the system. So all those characteristics described each investment and then individuals had to answer for, to these five questions that I mentioned before. So the first one has to do with the metropolitan area, the, the one that benefits most the metropolitan area. The second one is the personal preference. The third one is from a taxpayer's perspective. The fourth one is the voter perspective. And the fifth one is which one would improve the liability of the metropolitan area. So in each choice set, individuals have to answer these five questions. So this is the samples that we collected. As you can see, well, first, there is the socioeconomic profile. So we have age, fem um, gender, sorry, and income. The age is relatively similar across all countries and the standard deviation as well. It is a bit um, higher for the UK and a bit lower for Portugal. The the females were like female and male were almost 50 50 except for the us which was uh, a bit predominant predominated by the females the personal income this is all in australian dollars we used australian dollars to work in our models as you can see well this depends highly on the countries in portugal it is lower followed by the uk then by France, then Australia, and then the US. We try to include this in the models, obviously. Um, as you'll see later, it didn't show to be significant, but of course it is important to try and estimate if the income has something to do with preferences. Then um, here, there's also the characteristics of the trip profile. So first we ask people if they had used public transport in the last month. Here, as you can see, 74 and 75 of the people had used a public transport in the last month in Portugal and the UK, followed by France with 69%, then Australia 66, and the US had half, half of the of the respondents we interviewed had used public transport in the last month. And regarding the frequency of use, the this call the 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 second column in the, sorry, the second row in the trip profile represents the number of times using bus or BRT in the last month. Here, the, there is a clear predominance by Portugal, which, ha, which had 11.46 times used, and the lower was Australia with 5.85. The second one is the use of light rail and tram. The highest one is in France with 3.91 and the lowest is in the UK with 0 0.53. And finally, the number of times using train metro, the highest is in Portugal with 13.94, and the lowest is in the UK with 3.55. So actually there are quite some differences in the countries as expected. Every country has different settings and everything. So we expected these characteristics to be different and we, that's why we, we include them in the model. So it is interesting, first of all, before looking at all the models, how many respondents in these samples changed their response across the five different questions. We asked if they changed from BRT to LRT, depending on the context. And almost one third of each sample varied their responses. So we can see actually there are differences, only looking at the different responses, there are differences when and putting yourself in different perspectives and trying to answer which investment would you prefer. So what are the hypotheses that we have 
uh, for starters, when we started this project. So the first one is that there are significant differences in the drivers and the willingness to pay estimates when considering different pers perspectives. The second one is that the actual experience that respondents have on the modes of transportation and public transport has a significant influences, influence over their preferences. And the third one is that this influence of their experience might be different in the investment characteristics than in the system characteristics than in the cost attributes. So to test this hypothesis, the first one, we estimated a different model considering each of the different responses, if each of the different perspectives, and then we compared the drivers and the willingness to pay estimates. To test the second hypothesis, what we did was compared models without including any type of experience and others that include some type of experience. And to test the third hypothesis regarding this difference between the influence in the investment card in the characteristics, sorry, we um, estimated a model where we consider specific the influence that the experience has on the investment characteristics, on the system characteristics, and on the cost. So basically, the experience only affects a subset of the attributes, and we estimate specific parameters for those. So the ex actual experience that people have on public transport. Uh, was included as conditioning the utility function. I'm going to show you in the next slides the utility functions of the models we estimated. We tested different combinations of how experience might interact with preferences, and we found that this, the, the ones that were the best represent preferences, first of all, was the frequency of use per mode in the last month. And the second one was a dummy variable that indicated that the respondent had indeed used public transport in the last month and that person had BRT and LRT available in their city. So those were the only ones that we included in conditioning the utility, although we tested several different combinations and these ones were the ones that resulted uh, significant in the models. So to test how Hi, our hypothesis, as I mentioned before, we estimated three models. The first one is a simple MNL model, which doesn't have experience or anything conditioning the utility function. The second one is a heterostatic MNL model, which we call MNL zero. And this is conditioned by the actual experience, although we considered um, a common effect of the experience. So we estimated only one experience parameter for the whole utility function conditioning the whole utility function. And the third one is the HMNL model, which is similar to the HMNL zero. But in this case, we considered the actual experience acting in a specific subset of the attributes. I'm going to show you now the utility functions, and hopefully this will be clearer after this. So this is the first model that we estimated, the simple MNL. So, well, we have the alternative specific constants. Obviously, we only estimated one, but yeah. So the LRT was considered the base one, but I, I still put both of them in the utility function to avoid any confusion. And then uh, we have these utility functions, obviously consider the investment characteristics, all of them. They consider the system characteristics and the cost characteristics of the project. We also included social demographics in the BRT alternative. And we considered the frequency of use of the bus, metro, and train in the last month. We included this in the BRT alternative, like their MNLs, and they're estimated by difference. It doesn't matter where we included, but where we included them, but we included the frequency of use in the BRT. And then we included this dummy variable that I was explaining before in the LRT alternative which represents if a person has used public transport in the last month and they're in their city, they have available both VRT and LRT systems. So this is the MNL model. The HMNL model, as I was saying before, has the, basically the same utility functions as I just explained, which consider the investment characteristics, the system characteristics, the cost, and the social demographics. But now we condition these utility functions by the frequency of use in the case of the BRT here, 
we only condition it by the frequency of use of the bus, the metro, and the train, and we condition by the same parameters the whole utility function. In the case of the LRT, we consider also the frequency of use of each mode, and we add in this dummy variable. As I told you before, we tested many different combinations in these models, and this is the one in terms of the conditioning of the experience, the one that seemed to be the most appropriate one. So this is the HMNL0 model. And finally, the HMNL model is quite similar to the other ones, but in this case, we condition the utility function uh, separating subsets of the attributes. So as you can see, this, this first part conditions only the investment characteristics, and the parameters that we estimate are specific to the investment. So that's why it has in, because uh, those parameters were estimated. Um, so to represent the experience, the influence of experience in the investment characteristics. Then we have did the same thing for the system characteristics. So we conditioned the subset of attributes of the system characteristics. And finally, we did the same thing for the cost characteristics. We did the same thing for the LRT, except in each, in each experience conditioning uh, function, we also added this dummy variable that represents that a person used beer, uh, public transport in the last month in the presence of BRT and LRT in their city. So this is the HMNL um, equation. So, these models are not nested versions of each other because some of them consider some parameters, others didn't, so they are quite different. And so there, we only can compare them, well, we can compare them using the Bond test um, to see which ones are better. So the first part of the table considers, uh, compares the HMNL versus the MNL model. So that's the simplest without any experience. Um, as we can see, most of the models favor the HMNL model with different confidence levels. So the, um, so the metro model, which considers the improvement in the metropolitan area, apparently there, the two models with and without experience are equivalent. But in all the other models, there, there, is, a, there is a overall better performance of the HMNL model that is in the self-interest, the personal preference, the value which is the taxpayer's model, the voters, and the liability of the metropolitan area. In all those, the HMNL model is superior. And when comparing the HMNL with the HMNL zero, that is, if we should consider experience common between all the attributes or specific to a subset of the attributes, that's what we're comparing in this, we see that three of the five models favor the HMNL, that is the personal preference model, the taxpayers model, and the liability of the metropolitan area model. The two other, others are not saying that the HMNL zero are better, just they're saying that they are equivalent. So as we can see in every scenario, the HMNL is better or equivalent than the other two. So that's why our preferred model is the HMNL model. And for the purpose of the presentation, I'm going to continue only analyzing this model, the HMNL, the results of this. Okay, so regarding the empirical findings of this model, the gender was the only social demographic characteristic which was significant in the personal preference model and in the metropolitan area model. And the results show that female respondents were more inclined towards the BRT alternative, which we consider is, it is often associated with safety because there is a driver in the bus. So that could explain this, this result. Regarding the drivers, uh, I don't want to show you everything we got here, um, like the parameter estimates because it's too much. It is in our paper if anybody is interested later. Later. But um, here I'm just going to show you the drivers that seem to be significant. So the X represents when um, that driver seemed to be significant in that model for that alternative. 
So for example, this X represents that the construction cost was significant in the preferred model for the BRT. Well, the construction cost was always significant in every model. Um, the parenthesis represents if that was only significant in one country. So as we can see, the environmentally friendliness was only significant in Portugal for the preferred vote and life model. For the other two, it wasn't significant in any country. So that's how you can interpret this table. And um, mostly I just want to see uh, how many drivers were significant in each type of model in each alternative. And as we can see in the value model, which is the taxpayer's perspective, uh, there were less drivers. So we can say that from a taxpayer perspective, the characteristics of the investment and of the system might not be as relevant as, from, as they are from the other perspectives. Uh, we can see that there are significant differences here in the BRT, for example, the live model has almost every other characteristic significant, although for the BRT, the characteristics that are never significant are the level of business attracted to the station, the waiting time is transferred, and the, the dairy staff presence on board. And the, like I was saying, the live model has every other characteristic significant except the level of boarding, the value a bit more like the construction time, the percentage right of way, the metro other characteristics and the prefer, the personal preference model doesn't consider significant the percent right of way and the risk of being closed after a, a short period. So as you can see there are significant differences across the drivers from in the different models. In the LRT character Camila, your microphone uh, is from a while. So really, how long? Uh, a few seconds. So maybe you can. But in this same slide or before? No, just in this this slide. Ah, uh, okay. But now it's okay. Okay, sorry. Just when talking about LRT. Okay, great. Well, I was saying that the LRT. Yeah, I moved the one screen, so maybe that was why. Okay, so what I was saying that the LRT, there were three characteristics that were never significant. The, the first one was the capacity, headway, and the level boarding. We can see that there are significant differences in the drivers. Here, the investment characteristics, as you can see, there are quite a lot of differences. For example, the percentage of cars switched to this mode is only significant uh, through the taxpayer's perspective. Or here, well, the risk of being closed after a short period is only significant in Portugal in three models. And um, so we can see that there are quite a few differences in, in these models. And also in the number of drivers that are significant for each one. Regarding experience, um, we found that the personal preference model was the one that found more character, more experience car, um, parameters significant, sorry. So eight of the nine parameters that we tested were significant in the personal preference model. Um, in the vote model, from the voters' perspective, the experience didn't seem to be so relevant in preferences, where only two of the experience parameters were significant, one conditioning the investment characteristics and one conditioning the system part. So there were also quite a few differences regarding the effect that experience has on the different modes. Well, here are the willingness to pay estimates. Um, I'm not going to present to you all the numbers again. I'm just going to provide you an interpretation of the differences between countries and different models. So here, the, these graphs, the, the different colors represent the different models. Uh, for different uh, countries and the different the two different systems BRT and LRT. So here we can see to reduce the construction time by one year. This is really 
interesting. Here in the LRT, for example, we can see that in the UK, the willingness to pay to reduce the construction time is very, very high um, from the perspective of a self-interest resident. However, this is much, much lower from a taxpayer perspective. And actually, as you can see, the taxpayer perspective usually has the lower willingness to pay relative to the other one. So this is a very interesting finding and it shows the importance of considering different perspectives in the willingness to pay estimates. Here, to increase the population served um, by 1%, there are also quite a lot of differences even between alternatives. So in the BRT, we can see that the highest willingness to pay is usually in the self-interest model and followed by the others. In the US, they're all quite similar between them. And in the LRT, the highest willingness to pay is in the, to improve the, metro, the metropolitan area, well, to benefit the metropolitan area, actually. And the lowest is for the self-interest resident, which here was the highest. So we can see that there are differences between alternatives too. And this is another example to increase by 1% the right of way. Um, here for the BRT and the LRT, different models found them significant. In the case of the BRT, the highest one was to improve the metropolitan area and followed by the voter perspective and then the liability of the, to improve the liability of the metropolitan area. And in the LRT, the highest one was to improve the liability of the metropolitan area, which is much higher than, well, for most of the countries, than the taxpayer's perspective, which is the gray one, except for Portugal, where they're quite similar. So we can see that between the countries and between models and also between alternatives, there are huge differences in the willingness to pay estimates. So here are more willingness to pay estimates um, for different characteristics. So regarding the environmental friendliness, as I showed you before in the drivers, Portugal was the only one that considered this one significant in the BRT. And it is much bigger for, from the self-interest resident, followed by the voter perspective. In the LRT, this one is much higher from a voter perspective than for a high for a taxpayer perspective in Australia, France, UK and US. But in Portugal, actually the voter perspective and the taxpayer perspective are really similar. So these are quite interesting findings. This graph also represents uh, to reduce the travel time uh, relative to car by 1%. Here we can see that um, in the BRT perspective, the voters and the metropolitan area models are quite similar in other countries like Portugal, they're all quite similar. And in the LRT, this is mostly dominated by the metropolitan area and the liability of the, of the metropolitan area and the voters perspective. And here in to reduce the travel cost compared to car, we can see that from a self in the BRT for a self-interest resident, this is much higher than from a voter perspective. Here, it's significantly different in almost every case. And in the LRT, the voter perspective is usually higher than the self-interest resident, except in the UK that they're similar. So again, there are several differences across countries, across models, and across alternatives. We um, as part of understanding these differences, we simulated different scenarios of what would the different characteristics of the investment and what would different experience affect in the support towards BRT on, of, or LRT. So we have to start with the base level of support basically, which um, the base level of support for each scenario for each country. So here, this is a table, as you can see, most of them are between 43 and 50%. The only one that is um, higher than 50% is in France, in the taxpayers model, that they're more willing to support BRT. In the others, it's usually they're more willing to support LRT because it's um, lower than 50%. But although they're 
relatively in the area of 50%, which is interesting because it shows that maybe a small percentage of increasing the support would mean um, a very, like one over the other one, the BRT and LRT. So these are the higher percentages that we found in each country. Um, in Australia, France, Portugal, and the US was the taxpayers model. In the self-interest model, it, uh, in the UK, sorry, it was for the self-interest model that they were more willing to support the BRT. And the lower level of support for the BRT was usually from the voter perspective, which is interesting, and the livability of the metropolitan area in every country except the US, where it was in the self-interest model, that they're less willing to support the BRT. So the simulated scenarios show what the difference that a change in the attributes would mean in the level of support towards the BRT. So for example, if the LRT construction cost would be double than the one of the BRT, then the increase in support towards the BRT would vary between a 2% and a 7%, which is quite a lot. The 7% is in the taxpayer's model. And if we see that every support level was between 43 and 50%, we know that a 7% would mean a whole different outcome. So this is quite big. Um, for the self-interest model, it's the second one in some countries in Australia and the US specifically, and the others are more similar between them. The, if the BRT then was double the cost than the LRT, then of course this would mean a decrease in the support towards LRT. From a voter perspective, this would mean a decrease of almost 10%. And for the other models, this would vary between a decrease of two to 4%. So the voter perspective really punish the construction cost from the BRT. And in the case of the LRT, it's more the taxpayers. If the LRT construction time now was double the one of the BRT, in the UK apparently, from a self-interest perspective, the increase in support towards BRT would increase um, more than in the other models. That is around a 4.5 increase in support. And the other models are all between a 1.5 and almost 3% of increase in support. Um, this is equivalent, but inverse, if the BRT construction time is double that the one of the LRT, although a bit less. So if the BRT construction time is double the one of the LRT, from a self-interest perspective in the UK, the decrease in support would be between 2 and 2.5 but in the LRT was 4.5. So it, there are differences, although the, the behaviors are similar. And regarding the catchment areas, if the BRT serves 50% more people, we can see that the, the two models that consider in a metropolitan area are the ones that uh, increase their level of support higher, but this is between 1.8. So actually it's not that high as the attributes that we were seeing before. This level varies between one or 0 0.8 to almost two. And if the LRT serves 50% more people, there would be a decrease around the same value. So around one and two, two point something. From the self-interest perspective, and, and from the taxpayers and voters perspective, this decrease would be a bit more sick pronounced in Australia, France, and Portugal. And in UK and US, apparently it is for the voters and taxpayers. If the LRT was 10% environmentally more friendly, um, we can see that in Portugal, there is a decrease uh, on the support towards the BRT that is more, uh, more uh, higher in the taxpayer's perspective and in the metropolitan area perspective, which is quite between four, three and four, which is similar to Australia and France. And they're all in the UK and US, they're all around 2.5 or two. So we can see that there are also quite a lot of differences when changing the different characteristics of the investments in the levels of support. 
the experience parameter wasn't that significant in most of the cases in terms of changing the level of support. We saw that they were significant in the model, statistically significant, although here when analyzing different scenarios, we had to use extreme cases to make it to make the level of support vary more. So if the bus frequency of use increases in 100%, we can see that the major changes are in France and Portugal. In France, actually, from a voter's perspective and from the liability of the metropolitan area, this change would be between two and four. And if more, or the bus frequency would increase in 100%, people would be more willing to support um, BRT. However, in Portugal, from the liability um, of the metropolitan area perspective and from a taxpayer's perspective, if more people would use the bus or the frequency would increase in 100%, there would be a less, or there will be less support towards BRT between one and 2%. And regarding the metro frequency of use, if more people use the, met the metro, or the frequency would increase in 100%, then this would reduce the support towards BRT in almost every case, except from the self-interest perspective in France, but this is quite low, it's between 0 and 0 0.5. Here, the main support levels would change in Portugal from a taxpayer perspective, and in France from a voter perspective, which are to around 2.8 or something like that. Um, and the, regarding the availability, if every city had available BRT and LRT, we could estimate these and simulate sorry these scenarios only for Australia and the US, because these were the only two countries where we actually had had cities that had both systems available. In the others, we didn't, so that's why I'm only showing Australia and the US. This parameter dummy variable was only significant in the preferred model, the self-interest model and the voter perspective. As we can see, there is an increase in Australia and the US from a self-interested resident between well, 1.5 to Australia almost and 0 0.5 in the US increase. Um, and from the voter's perspective, the decrease would be between 2.5 for Australia and 0 0.5 approximately in the US. So there are a lot of of outcomes from this study that we can see through the simulated scenarios and also through their willingness to pay estimates. So the key findings of our project, first of all, was that experience seems to have a significant influence regarding the overall performance of the model. And this influence seems to vary across subsets of the attributes, as I show you the investment attributes, the system attributes, and the cost. However, the influence of experience on, on the simulated scenarios for the BRT and LRT was quite small. This is an important finding since it takes the pressure off the much promoted position that until you experience a mode, you are unlikely to obtain sufficient community support to it. So actually this is encouraging to know that experience is not always so relevant to our, in affecting preferences and support. So the different measures of preference revelation produce noticeable changes in the different willingness to pay estimates, including different subsets of statistically significant willingness to pay estimates. And also we saw a, a lot of differences in the drivers. So there is clear evidence of preference heterogeneity between countries, between model support drivers and between modes suggesting that replication as a basis of transferability of evidence is potentially problematic. And this is across country, across perspectives, and across uh, mo modes. The scenario simulations show some high sensitivities in the levels of support for one mode of the, over the other when changing the different characteristics of the investment and the system and the costs. The greatest percentage changes are associated with the construction cost, construction time, and environmental friendliness. As we saw, the exp experience and availability of the cities uh, wasn't always that significant in every country and in every model as the other factors that we saw. Historically, cost-benefit analysis has used self-interest or private consumer preferences. Um, and to avoid any, any risk of double counting, 
benefits, this should remain the appropriate metric to cap capture so societal preferences in cost-benefit analysis. However, this uh, analysis, the cost-benefit analysis, can be complemented by incorporating preferences of residents and expre as expressed in a number of other ways, as we saw in this paper, as voters, as taxpayers, or others. The results show that the voice of residents has a number of interpretations that might highly influence the outcomes. So this paper has the intent, amongst other reasons, of drawing to the attentions of politicians, their advisors, and the gover government bureaucracy that the voice of the residents has a number of interpretations that have buy in appeal and will likely lead to a positive electoral outcome, regardless of the cost-benefit findings. Thank you. Thank you.